on the subject of Democratic Party primary candidates. So there was this interview uh, that Breaking Points had with RFK Jr. And it is triggering a lot of the anti-vax weirdos online. I saw Jimmy Dore tweet about this. I saw Kim Iverson tweet about this. They're saying that like Crystal Ball is espousing big pharma talking points for basically just saying, what do you say to people who who think that this anti-vax position of yours is a non-starter? And they're all uh, they're all coming after her. So I want to watch a little bit of this. Before very... we get to the vaccine stuff, I do want to see... Let's see here. So the healthcare Medicare for all. I want to know if he supports Medicare for all. Because like if you don't support Medicare for all in a Democratic Party primary, then what is the point of you even running? So let's hear as you know, every other developed nation in the world has universal health care. Do you support universal health care through a Medicare for all program or something similar? I mean, uh, my, you know, my, um, my, I, I would say my, my highest ambition would be to have a single payer program, which, you know, with uh, people who want to have private programs can go ahead uh, and do nope. that. You can't have a robust single payer system with private insurance. So this is like the Tulsi Gabbard model. And it's bullshit. It's 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 not good. Like it's better than what we have now for sure. But um, no. Why? Like why would you espouse? Like people were saying that like Crystal Ball was espousing big pharma talking points. Why would you espouse health industry talking points? Like why do they need to exist? They need to be abolished. Full stop. Like they should not be allowed to exist. Private insurance is predatory. Private insurance is not something that we need. We just need healthcare to be guaranteed. And you don't do that by allowing these vultures to exist. So, no, don't like it. But to have a single hair plug program that is available to, to everybody, I don't know how politically realistic that is. But, you know, if you ask me if I were designing the, the system from the beginning, that's what I would do. Hmm. Um, That's a right. shitty answer, though. I don't know how realistic that is. Aren't you running for president? How realistic is your bid, bitch? How realistic is your bid? Like, we're not talking about what is and isn't realistic. Like, you're running to be president, so do you support it or do you not? Oh, well, I don't know. It's not realistic. I would, I would, I would go with that though. If we we're like designing it from the start. Oh well, how fucking merciful of you. So you don't support Medicare for all, and if you do, to the extent that you do, you're a trash advocate for it. Hey, the system now is broken. Uh, we take, why is it broken you know, though why is it broken specifically because of the profit motive and you want to leave the private insurance companies there where their number one priority is profits so i i just this doesn't make sense to me most for healthcare in the world we are i think we're 79th we're behind like costa rica and cuba in terms of health outcomes we have the highest level of chronic disease in the world of any country. You know, that means neurological diseases, autoimmune diseases, um, uh, 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 allergic diseases like peanut allergies, food allergies, uh, eczema, anaphylaxis, asthma. And uh, and we we pay more than anybody else. We we also consume, consume more pharmaceutical products. I think we take more. I think we take three to four times as many drugs per capita than Europeans do. Mm -hmm. And they're not making us healthier. Mm -hmm. The third largest cause of death in this country after cancer and heart attacks is now pharmaceutical drugs. Oh, Americans are the sickest country in the world. This is the sickest generation we've ever had. Like all this stuff that he's saying here, isn't that more reason to have a single payer system and to fight for one? No, because it's not realistic. Also, I'd leave the private insurance in. Just not, not good. Not good at all. And we pay, we spend four point three trillion dollars on healthcare every year. I wonder why that is. Of that goes to treating chronic disease. And I, to me, the also we spend more because of administrative costs, which would not exist if we had one payer, a single payer system. But he's opting for a multi payer system, which that's what private plus public is. That's a multi payer system. The, the worst, you know, the most alarming metric. When I was a boy, um, 6% of Americans had chronic disease. Today, by 2006, 54%. And, you know, I'm sure it's gone up since then. That means half our children are debilitated for life from a chronic disease. And, uh, and you know, the, the pharmaceutical industry is making a lot of money on that, selling us the EpiPens, the albuterol inhalers, the anti-seizure medication. So what that tells me is that we should nationalize them. 
why do we have private pharmaceutical companies? Nationalize them. Any American pharmaceutical company? Nationalize them. I, I agree. We shouldn't have profit motives uh, where public health is concerned. Nationalize it all. Isn't that the logical solution? Is he going to support that? Is that the next question? Uh, the insulin shots and all that, and they're making a killing. They make, you know, half a trillion dollars a year. Uh, but it's not good for our country. And what we need is public health agencies that are actually focused on public health rather than advancing the pharmaceutical paradigm sure. and profits for these pharmaceutical companies. It's interesting to me. Andrew. But what does that look like from a policy standpoint? Are you, do you support nationalization? Like, it, it just is, uh, it's frustrating to me to hear you talk about all of these illnesses, but then the solution isn't Medicare for all because you wouldn't fight for that because it's not realistic. It's just bizarre to me. Um, okay, let me see. There's climate. Let me, let's see what he says about climate change. In my campaign, I'm not going to be talking a lot about uh, climate. Why is that? Because climate has become a, a, a crisis like COVID that uh, the Davos group and other um, totalitarian elements in our society have util have used as a pretext for clamping down totalitarian controls. But Stop. I <laughs> what the fuck? He's like to the right of Biden on climate change in a Democratic Party primary. I didn't think that that was possible. So let me ask you about vaccines. This is an area where you and I have um, significant differences. And, you know, just to level with you on this, like a lot of what you say, I really respond to. I think you're a very genuine person. But the across the board, um, whether you want to call it vaccine skepticism or anti-vax advocacy, which has been a central part of what you've been up to for the past number of years, for me personally, it's a it's an issue and it's a it's a real sort of red line. And I know I'm not alone Same. in that, especially running in a Democratic primary. There are going to be other millions of people like me who have similar concerns. So how how do you win them over? What's your message to same? I, I agree with Crystal Ball here. That's my red line. I would never, ever vote for an anti-vaxxer. I would never vote for a, an anti-science dipshit. Um, yeah, that's a, that's absolutely a red line. But there's so many other like red flags about him. Like, I'm curious, what is his stance on like LGBTQ plus rights? Um, what is his stance on policing, criminal justice? People who think like I do. Well, but just tell me, um, tell me where you think I got it wrong. On everything. Well, I think you get it wrong when you draw a uh, correlation between the rise of things like autism and the introduction of vaccines when there isn't hard scientific evidence tying those things together. How do you I, know? Let, let me ask you this. How do you know there's not a hard scientific evidence? Well, because the one major study that purported to show that was retracted and the scientist who conducted it was, um, you know, had to... Was, now, what you're doing... Now and, okay... You, it's impossible to debate with an anti-vaxxer. It's it's impossible to debate with any conspiracy theorist because if you have somebody who is in sort of a cult, you're you're just not going to convince them. Um, but I will say that H. Palmer guy did a really good video on the anti-vax movement, and it shows you how all of these uh these positions became popularized and how the people who push these ideas are charlatans so i'll just encourage people to watch that but like what crystal is trying to do here is get him to explain ultimately like how do you appeal to people who just they are turned off inherently by anti-vax bullshit and he responds by trying to debate her with anti-vax bullshit but her point is what is your pitch to people because you're not going to convince them they're not going to convince you so how do you appeal to these folks who you're supposed to be winning over and his answer is like anti-vax word vomit Oh, basically Crystal. fraudulently created. Listen, no, I don't, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. But I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to get in a debate with you about this because you've spent your life pulling out this study. That I will tell you. I will, let me just tell you. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Let me just tell you. I'm not. I've listened to. There are hundreds of. You. This is what like he's like foaming at the mouth. You can't even reason with him. She brings up vaccines and he immediately starts like trembling. He's like. Arr! What is like? What's the policy there, by the way? Because like he's he's been anti-vax even before the COVID vaccine. Like I think that COVID nineteen and the COVID vaccine broke a lot of people uh, their brains and made them anti-vax. 
But, like, he's been anti-vax long before that. Like, he might be more of an OG than Jenny McCarthy. He's too deep in that bubble. He's too far gone. I don't think anything's going to convince him. Hours of interviews with you with an, yeah. an open mind. And I'm not persuaded. Now, maybe I'm wrong. That's possible. You're I'll not. out there. People can watch. I thought Megyn Kelly did a phenomenal interview with you that went through all these claims piece by piece by piece. I really encourage people to watch that whole exchange because we won't be able to do it justice here in the five minutes we have left. But there are going to be people. Yes. If people are against are only against the COVID-19 vaccines, they are by definition anti-vaxxers. And they're also stupid by definition because the vaccines are good. They work. And if you don't want to take it, don't take it. But I'm not going to try to convince you because I'm done with that. If you don't want the vaccine, get sick. Get sicker. I don't know. I don't care. Die. Who cares? I'm, I'm done trying to convince these dipshits. I had this debate with me, uh, many members of my family. I'm just over it. Like, if you don't want the vaccine, whatever. I'm done trying to convince you. People like me who aren't persuaded and who see this as an issue and the fact that it's been such a central part of your advocacy means I can't just sort of put it to the side and say, oh, well, I'll just ignore, you know, this piece that's been really important to you in your life. So you're running in a Democratic primary. You have a lot of people who feel even more strongly than me who think that, you know, Dr. Fauci is a hero in all of these things. How are you going to persuade them? How are you going to reach them? And what is your message to them? Well, um, first of all, I'm not leading with, you know, my opinions about vaccines. Mm -hmm. What I say to people is show me where I got it wrong. Show me the, where I got my science wrong. I've written books about this. I've, you know, I wrote a book about... If he wrote an anti-vaccine book, there's just no convincing him. You'd you'd be probably more easily able to convince a QAnoner to leave like QAnon than him to stop being anti-vax. Link between thimerosal and autism that has I think 450 si distilled scientific studies that confirm and validate that hypothesis, and 1,400 references. And if I got something wrong, show me where it is. But I think people uh, have shown you where things are wrong, uh, well, uh, but you don't want to hear well, it. Is because I've seen you know based. numerous. Fact checks Dr. Vinay Prasad, who we, you know, really respect on uh, the COVID vaccine. He went through your interview with All In. He did a fact check. I mean, it's not. And, and I people did have, a fact check of Vinay, and you should read that. I will take a look at it. But, but uh, I don't uh, think that it's fair to Chris, say nobody me, has ever pointed out anything that's been, that's been I, wrong. Well, here's what I, people complain about what I say. Mm. And I, again, I'm not leading on this issue, so people can either take it or leave it. But if you want to, you know. No, no, take it or leave it. Again, you want to be the president of the United States. Let's say there's another pandemic or there's a new COVID variant where a new round of vaccines are necessary. That has implications. Like as president, you can choose to not invest in funding for that. What you do as president, what you say as president matters a lot. So it's not just, oh, we'll take it or leave it. I'm not leading with this. No, this is a huge fucking thing. Believe it or not, COVID-19 is not over yet. Like it's still pandemic status. So and, and there could be another pandemic, right? So... These things matter. And yeah, as, as Pixel Tonic puts it, I will leave it. Exactly. Because like this is a huge thing. When you have this anti-intellectualism, this anti-science sentiment in the country right now that is proliferating at alarming speeds, like the president's stance matters. Like Trump has done a lot to raise the overall dumb fuck level of the country. And like, why would... People on the Democratic Party side vote for someone who's going to do the same thing that Trump did, have the same damaging effect. It's just a non-starter. So I don't I don't understand, like, why he thinks he's qualified to compete in a, in a Democratic Party primary. Like, if I were him, I would run on the Republican side. But I mean, like, Democrats see Kennedy and Democrats like NPCs just automatically think, oh, he's must be good. Uh, when they have Marianne Williamson in the race, like if you want to vote for somebody other than Biden, I get it. I'm voting for Marianne Williamson. But like, why would you vote for this like fucking libertarian-esque kook? Like, it's just so weird. Like, he's a libertarian hybrid of Alex Jones. It, it's just, it's, it's really weird. I, what you just said about me that I'm sort of hard-headed and stubborn and just won't give in. You are. You're wrong about that. If mm. somebody shows me where I'm wrong, I'm going to correct it. And you know we have no, he the won't. most. Yeah, I agree, Twinkle. Like that, his whole like anti-vaccine dumb fuckery is inherently ableist. To make it seem as if like autism is some bad thing, fuck you.
Like, I have autistic family members, autistic friends. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself, okay? You're not better than them. You're not smarter than them. Fuck you. Just because your name is Kennedy doesn't mean that you have golden balls, okay? You still shit like all of us. You're a human being, and you're not qualified to run for president. But again, like, all you have to do is, like, win the Lucky Sperm Club, and automatically you have a leg up in life. You could run for president even if, like, nobody knows who you are. You just gotta have that last name, and boom, you're there. It's, it's so fucked up. Hard for me to believe this won't be an important part of how you govern. So I think that's the most important pe piece for people to get, who you have to accept there are going to be people like me who just don't agree with you on this. Um, you, you know, certainly understand that there are many who do think that the vaccines that we have are more beneficial than harmful, that, you know, got their kids vaccinated and are gr happy for that decision. Um, so how is this going to impact the way that you govern or does it not at all? I mean, I'm going to govern according to, you know, what evidence-based medicine. Oh, uh, that's, mm. you know, that's so it, let me Let me give a specific question. If there's another pandemic, in the last pandemic... My grandmother's going to vote for him just because of his name. Genuinely so frustrating. Yeah, that's the thing a lot of people do. Like, name recognition is just... It goes so far in this country, and I hate that that's the case, because it shouldn't. You should look at each candidate based on the policies that they support, based on, you know, their history of governing or advocacy. But it's like Democratic Party voters, and not just Democratic Party voters, all voters, they see somebody's last name or celebrity status, and they just turn off their fucking brains and vote for them. It is genuinely extremely fucking frustrating. So I feel for you. Uh, I feel for you a lot. That sucks. Nick, uh, former President Trump, something we gave him a lot of credit for. He launched Operation Warp Speed. Um, they had a whole of government approach. They used the mRNA technology that was developed using, you know, U.S. taxpayer dollars to get a vaccine out to the population. My dad is a Trump supporter, but the Kennedy name and anti-vax stance will probably win him, uh, win his vote. Yeah, it doesn't, it honestly doesn't surprise me. For sure. Definitely appeal for apolitical normies. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Plea as possible. How would your approach have differed? My approach would have been a science-based approach. Which means what? Which means... Uh, <laughs> Not a, science. And a, and a medicine-based approach. The approach that has been used for, you know, for, and approved for decades. You look first at therapeutics that are off the shelf, and you look at the efficacy at, of those. I mean, what I would have done if I was in power then, I would have created an information grid because now we have this internet that is supposed to benefit us and has become... Is that an instrument for you would have created an information grid motherfucker during a pandemic priority number one is finding a fucking cure or a vaccine but you would have created an information grid so like none of us would have gotten the vaccine if you were president like fuck you let's use it for something good let's link all 15 million doctors frontline physicians all over the world and find out what they're doing to treat this new respiratory virus and find out what they're saying is working and not working, and then test that with science, um, and then may turn it into instantaneously into protocols and recommendations for other scientists. So would a vaccine did, development did, be we part did of that or not? Well, you know, I don't think the vaccine worked. I think, you know, if you think it worked, then try to explain to me why the countries that were unvaccinated did much better than our than well, our many our, of those countries because there are a lot of different factors well, in various countries so a lot right. of those countries as you pointed out well, before why do we, we have, hold why on, do we hold have on. the highest death rate well, count in, in the world by far i think there are a lot of factors that may go into that yeah. one of them is the fact that we are disproportionately obese as a society we have the negative health and outcomes that you've been that? talking about we don't go outside as much as countries say in africa i mean we have there are a lot of different factors that may play into that but i will i will say did the vaccines work in the way they were initially promised to prevent spread? No, I don't think so, especially once you got to later variants. But we have a lot of data that shows that in terms of reducing severe hospitalization and death, the vaccines were really important. And maybe there was a cost-benefit analysis. I want to see that data. I know that's what the <laughs> issue <there's>, is. <laughs> there's, there, there's no convincing him. There's really no convincing him. I mean... There are multiple studies and reports about how the COVID-19 vaccines prevented hundreds of thousands of deaths in the United States, like just within the first couple of months, particularly of seniors. But it's like, nope, can't believe it. Won't fight through the cognitive dissonance. And to state otherwise is to be 
citing uh, Big Pharma talking points. But at the same time, even though he's anti-Big Pharma, he refuses to state, to my knowledge, that he wants to nationalize Big Pharma. But he's really tough on Big Pharma. Like, these people are just so insufferable. And talking with them is just going to lead to you talking in circles all day. There is lots of data, and not just from here, uh -oh. from around the world, that shows the vaccine doses, and not just our vaccines, but ones that were created all around the world, reduce severe hospitalization and death. So in that way, yes, I do very much believe that they were. Let me tell you something. I, what I believe you're doing now is you're parroting what the public health agencies have been saying, but they do not have a scientific basis for that. And I have another book out that you should look at. Oh, another book. Died suddenly that goes through all the Johns Hopkins data, which is the you know, dashboard data that everybody used mm. and shows exactly what happened when the vaccine. First of all, the even the, the the vaccine, the Case Western study that is the, probably the largest, most recent, mm -hmm shows that at most the vaccine gives you a very, very small amount of protection and that after seven months. OK, I can't listen to him anymore, but I'm trying to figure out, like, what is his credentials here? Um, and this dude is an environmental lawyer. OK, that's so weird. Uh, first of all, you are not qualified to talk about vaccines and be a published author when it comes to vaccines. Second of all, you're an environmental lawyer, but... Your climate change stance is fucking insane. This is weird. He's the nephew of John F. Kennedy. So it doesn't matter if you're a complete dumb fuck. So long as you win the Lucky Sperm Club, you can run for president. Holy shit. And he's at, like he's polling higher than Marianne Williamson. Make it make sense. Beta male.